Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Phoenix, Arizona, it's time for Phoenix Business Radio, spotlighting the city's best businesses and the people who lead them. Welcome to 3C Amplified. I'm your host, Jacqueline DeStremps, here to highlight the businesses, nonprofits, and individuals collaborating to amplify their impact in the community. This series is sponsored by Another Hand Advantage, where I create marketing strategies for community-minded small businesses and nonprofits that fit their schedule and budget while making their brand stand out in front of their audience. Joining me in the studio today is Paula Boca Bomarito with Copper Point Insurance and Kim Tarnopolsky with 100 Plus Women Who Care, Valley of the Sun. Welcome. Thank Hello. you. I was just thinking, oh my gosh, what if I mess up Kim's name? <laughs> I've known I've known Kim, gosh, now for six years. For six years, so that would have that would have been very embarrassing. <laughs> it's a tough one. I know. Every once in a while, when I email you and I have to, and it doesn't pop up automatically, and I go to spell your last name, I go, "That's not right," but it is. I'm like, "No, that's right." And so, okay. <laughs> well, welcome, ladies, into the studio today. I'm excited to share with everybody about something that has been a big part of my life now for the past five years. And um, that's how we all actually all three know each other. And that's the 100 plus Women Who Care Valley of the Sun. So before we get into that, though, let's do a couple of introductions. Um, Paula, why don't you kick it off with, well, where you know you're Paula, (laughs) but tell us a little bit about um, Copper Point and what you do for Copper Point. Oh, it'd be my pleasure. Well, I won't give you my title because it's way too long, (laughs) but I am so fortunate to be on the community giving side of it and our community involvement. And I have to say, Copper Point Insurance Companies, the DNA of the company, the heart of the company is community involvement. They're all about relationships and giving back, and they do such a superior job. You know, there's so many organizations out there that have it as part of their vision or their mission, but do they really do it? Is it, do they really walk the talk? You know, and I've always believed in something that Gandhi said, you know, we must be the change that we wish to see in the world. And I see Copper Point doing that. So I feel very honored to be the one in charge of all of that. And this is, I'm on the flip side of the table now. I used to be a nonprofit for 10 years and now to be on the giving side of it, I feel so fortunate. And to be involved with organizations like the 100 Women Who Care, you know, that gives you just such a a sense of we're making a difference. And when I was putting together um, show notes and uh, questions for today, actually, one of the things that I really, um, I guess, had I hadn't really looked at too often before was the mission of Copper Point. And I was really mm-hmm. excited to hear about the community involvement and we get to talk to about that a little bit more today, because you're right. A lot of companies want to say that that's part of their values or their vision, but is it really, you know, how good have they been able to weave that throughout their company culture and actually, like you said, walk the walk and, and get that done. So excited to go into that some more today. Great. And Kim, I feel funny saying, Kim, why don't you introduce yourself? Because I know <laughs> you, Kim, but not everybody listening knows who Kim Tarnopolsky is. So Kim, a little bit about yourself. Sure. I am the chief community builder for 100 Plus Women Who Care Valley of the Sun. And 100 Plus Women Who Care is, we're a philanthropic group of women who get together quarterly and support local charities. And it gives us an opportunity to facilitate a giving process for women in the Phoenix metropolitan area that is fun and simple, but yet very impactful. And we are celebrating our five-year anniversary this quarter. So that has both you and I extremely (laughs) excited. And we're in the middle of planning our Q4 giving circles that are coming up within the next two weeks. So super excited to close the year out strong and go into year six, having um, met one of our big goals. And just how exciting to, uh, look at, I guess, to when we started this, you know, one of the big goals that you kind of brought to the table when we got together to do this was the 500,000 in five years. And then for us to just keep seeing that ticker over time, quarter after quarter, 
going up and up and up and up and we're almost there. And so that's what's really exciting, I think, because, you know, obviously you want to have goals in business or in nonprofits. You want to have those goals of what um, what you want to be able to you know, what either whether you're what your profit is or what you're giving back. And it was a very lofty goal, but something we just knew we're gonna make this happen. Yeah, it did. <laughs> it just kind of came out of our mouths and we said, wouldn't it be cool if we can donate a half a million dollars in five years? And every year it was like, oh, we reached a hundred thousand dollars. Oh, we reached two hundred thousand dollars. And to be sitting here today within reach of that goal. Um, really does give me goosebumps. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just super excited to close the year out strong. So Paula, let's bring you then into this mix. So you've been a member now of our Awatuki group. Actually, the Scottsdale group. The Scottsdale group. group. Sorry about that. You've been a member of our Scottsdale group. And how long have you been a member now? I think it's been almost four years. Yeah. Yeah. I think you joined right after, well, your previous organization was the very first donation that we yes. gave out of our Awatuki group. Right. And I think you joined right after that. Okay. So. All right. <laughs> Lucky me, right? I know. I know. <laughs> so how did you find out about 100 Women Who Care? What was your draw to that? It was actually one of my board members who was deeply entrenched in the Awatuki group. And I just believe that as women... We need to take leadership. We need to we need to really take focus on what's really important. Kim and I were actually discussing earlier, for some, serving is part of the fiber of who you are. And it has been for me, for my whole professional career, and how lucky I am for that, that I can take what I'm passionate about and actually have a profession surrounding that. So being a part of the 100 Women Who Care was just just one step in the right direction. And like you said, for those who have the kind of that... Um that, you know, passion, it's kind of ingrained in them, Mm -hmm. giving back and being a part of that. I think for people who maybe have never heard of a giving circle before or this 100 who care concept, it kind of perks you up because you're like, ooh, (laughs) another way to give back, but it's not going to take up, it's not going to take away from any of the other things that I'm already doing. And I think that's what really drew me to it when Kim first told me about it, go into that story here uh, in a little bit. But when Kim first told me about it, I just thought, oh, well, duh. Yeah. Who that, knew? Who, yeah. <laughs> that sounds that sounds amazing. But never did I realize when we first were having that conversation that day um, that there were giving circles. This was going on all over the place, um, even outside of the 100 Who Care movement. Um, and we actually, Kim and I were on a call uh, about a month or so ago. And we actually learned from an organization out of um, Seattle, correct? They're getting together basically uh, to kind of do some research on all the giving circles around the world. Mm -hmm. And they had pulled a stat that within the last two decades, giving circles just in the U.S. alone have been responsible for putting, I want to say it's, let me make sure, $1.2 billion um, into into communities That's and nonprofits remarkable. and charities. And for us at 100 Women Who Care, what makes that so exciting is, one, we are we can say, oh, yeah, well, we're about five, about $500,000 of that $1.2 billion is from our, our members here just in Phoenix. Um, but the other exciting thing, I think, is for people to then know when you explain to them the concept, that's just meeting for one hour once a quarter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's the kind of impact that you can that you can have. Now, granted, other giving circles have different structures. That just happens to be how ours um, it operates. But I think that's one of the, again, one of those things that draws people in when they hear about the 100 Who Care concept. And um, again, exciting when you're going back to looking at that 500,000 to think that we just did that, you know, one hour, one quarter at each one of our, um, at each one of our groups. And how many charities you've impacted. Right. With those dollars over the five years is tremendous. I just did the math today. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking over and, Kim. I'm like, I hope Kim has that number. <laughs> I'm preparing for our five year celebration, and after these, this quarter, it'll be 52 charities that we've touched. 
yeah. over five years. Fabulous. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's huge. I mean, uh, I w- was formerly with JDRF, Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, as the executive director for Arizona. And thanks to you, we got to initiate a camp for kids with type 1 diabetes. And it truly was transformative weekend for these young people. So that's just one piece of the puzzle that you've created over mm-hmm. the last five years. Let's go back and talk a little bit about what you do now for Copper Point. So as we mentioned, that's a big part of their mission and values. It's something that's ingrained within Copper Point. So, but what does that look like as far as what you're overseeing? Is it grants um, in the community to nonprofits? Is it volunteer activities for your employees? What does that look like? Yes. Well, I have to say, um, Copper Point is in a real transformative moment in time. We have gone in the last three years under the leadership of Mark Schmidtlein, who is our CEO. He has taken us from a private entity, a government entity, to, I'm sorry, from government to private to now we went from one state in three years to nearly 10 states today. So that transformation has brought about a desire to give back even more, but how? Mm -hmm. How do we go about that strategically, and how do we do it in a way that we can be the most impactful? We could sprinkle it all about, and it would make a difference, but would it make the level of impact that it should? And would it align with our business model? You know, because honestly, I think it's very important when you are a corporation giving back that it aligns with business that you're involved with. So we're deeply entrenched in um, healthy families, thriving workforce, economic development. So how do we take our focus areas and our charities and align those? So that's what I get to do. And we get to align it with our support as far as dollars as well as our volunteer hours. So fortunate because Copper Point um, pays $12, I'm sorry, $12 hours per employee, tongue twister, (laughs) per employee um, paid, which is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. We do matching for individuals uh, up to $500 annually, which is impactful. A way to share that would be we just finished our um, United Way campaign. The employees contributed over 125000 almost 137000 which we matched, making it nearly 275000 So that just goes to show the power of Copper Point's commitment to what the, the employees believe in. And then we also have over um, 30 employees, leadership that are involved in boards and communities of different charities, which is amazing Mm -hmm. as well. So along with all of that, we do team building wrapped around how do we get involved in the community with that team building. So how lucky am I to be able to take all of that (laughs) and strategize it in a way that we can really meet the needs of the nonprofits in each one of our communities of our 10 states. And, you know, I was thinking about it on the way here. I don't honestly know how America would survive without nonprofits, because nonprofits fill such a void, such a need that allows our communities to thrive. But with that being said, nonprofits can't exist without corporations. Mm -hmm. So it's hand in hand that we walk together to make this difference. Well, and I like too that you point out um, the strategy behind looking for those nonprofits that meet those areas that all are also meeting your company's values and goals, because then that leads to sustainability. You can't keep giving back or having these systems or uh, programs if you're kind of all over the place with, like you said, a smattering here, a little bit there. Next thing you know, somebody comes along and says, yeah, you know what? We didn't meet our numbers this year. So I don't really think that we can 
do what we're doing here anymore as far as giving back in the community. But when you have that strategy in place and it's something that's so ingrained in what you stand for and the strategies behind what you're doing in your business, it's so much easier than to keep carrying on with those. Right. those you're programs. spot on. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Well, there we go. And let's stay in the show. No. <laughs> no, so that's great. So um, when you made that switch over, because you did mention you were with a nonprofit, now you're with um, with Copper Point. What are some of the, you know, obviously there's a lot of the obvious um, differences, but what were some of those differences for you then, like you said, kind of being on the other side of things? Because you, you were with a nonprofit for, did you say? Ten, ten years. Ten years. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, there's more similarities than differences. Mm -hmm. And I think that so often, and Kim can attest to this, individuals don't understand that nonprofits are a business and they need to be run as a business to (laughs) truly value the dollars Mm -hmm. that are donated. You know, we have to be efficient and effective just like any business. So that strategy, those processes, and those procedures translate beautifully with what I'm doing right now because you have to have that overarching vision and goal, which um, Copper Point has had for nearly 95 years now. They truly started from the very beginning with philanthropy. And that's why we've been um, recognized many, many times and admired by how we approach our business through the community. So it truly, most of my responsibilities are very similar. I'm working on building relationships. We're building relationships with our policyholders. We're building relationships with our agencies. It's that cohesiveness and that synergy that is really fun to see what's happening and how we can impact in such a different way. Yeah, that's great. So let's talk a little bit about then our origin story here, Kim, is how sure. when you and I when you and I met. So um, I've mentioned it before, but we'll I'll just kind of talk about it a little bit, a bit again. So how I got I, I like to say wrangled into <laughs> 100 women who care it's all about strategy <laughs> um, was so Kim and I uh, were volunteers for the Arizona Super Bowl host committee back in um, I guess it actually. So the Super Bowl was here in 2015, but we started volunteering, right, in 2014 because they started a year prior to the actual Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. So so we were on the the volunteer uh, committee and... We had I had not, we'd noticed each other at a couple of different events. We always seemed to be at the same ones. And one day, um, I I don't even know how we got on the topic of, but you were saying where you live, and I said where I lived, and there was an event coming up at the stadium, and we said, why don't we carpool? And so I always like to joke and say, so the ride out was Kim asking me about what I did. And I had just started my business. I had just started another hand advantage. And at the time, I was focusing just on doing web design. And so she was asking me all sorts of questions about my business and web design and what's that look like, this and that. So we get out to the stadium. We have our event. We do the volunteer event. And then the car ride back was basically Kim telling me, have you ever heard of this thing called 100 Women You Care? And I said, no. And she's like, well, I just heard about it. She was on the board for another organization that had just been a recipient of a donation from another 100 Who Care group. And I said, oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. And so she said, well, how would you, you know, would you be interested in in doing the website for it? I really want to start one. I've got a couple other ladies I'm talking to. And I said, well, heck, I want to do more than just do the website. I want to be, you know, I want to be part of this. This is amazing. Yeah. And so that's kind of how that all started. And it's so funny whenever I, even now when I I'm typing it out because I'm writing something up or when I'm saying it, I think, oh my gosh, how crazy how things like that come together. And then here we are, you know. I know. <laughs> Five, six years later. I and know. the one thing I didn't know about Jacqueline at the time was her connection to nonprofits and her big heart for nonprofits was something that I learned about you. So it was a natural fit for you to come on board our executive team and not only be our social media website, all things technology guru, (laughs) Um, but also... Keeper um, of the projector and screen. (laughs) Yes, yes. But um, your your history, your past history with nonprofits has been invaluable to our 
our chapter and being able to understand understand nonprofits better since we do vet all of our charities and make sure that they meet our criteria. And if I ever have a question about it, I'll call Jacqueline up and say, hey, what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. And we can usually talk it out and come to a good conclusion about um, whether or not they'd be a good fit for our chapter. Yeah. So what do you say we'd be up to, after this quarter, we'll be up to 50... Two charities? 52 charities. charities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and what's important to point out, so we have three groups right now. We have a group that meets in Scottsdale. We have a group that meets in Ahwatukee. And then we have a group that meets in the East Valley. And I think technically it's Gilbert, right, is where the location is. It is Gilbert, yes. Gilbert right now. So um, of those three groups, each group, members of each group get to nominate um, charities. So you know, technically each quarter we're giving to three different charities, which again, I think is really awesome when you just stop and think about it. And I think sometimes I take that for granted. Like we've been doing it for so long now that sometimes when I'm explaining it to people and I say, oh no, we give to three different charities each quarter. They're thinking, one, they're thinking that if, oh wow, $10,000 to a charity each quarter, that's amazing. And I'm like, oh yeah, times three, because we have three, cha- we have three mm-hmm. groups. And they're like, what? And I'm like, oh yeah, that is kind of we gave almost twenty nine thousand dollars this last quarter. Yeah, so we're getting close to that thirty thousand dollars a quarter awesome. mark. So, which is over a hundred thousand dollars a year. And that was the interesting thing as I was looking through our materials, planning for our five year celebration this quarter. All of our, most of our materials say, and our goal is to donate half a million dollars in five years. And that's going to have that verbiage now will change because we'll have. I know. What are we going to change that to after the know, five I, year mark? It sounds <laughs> like a million. I know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe a million. Right. Um, but I think, you know, a great goal is to be able to donate $100,000 every year um, is a good benchmark for our achievements. Mm-hmm. Well, and 100 percent of all donations go directly to the nonprofit. Very Mm -hmm. few organizations can say that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's also what's great is that when our members bring the charity to our attention, they've had a conversation with that charity about what is the specific need of that charity. And they can relay that to our members in the decision-making process. And we know that it's not just going into a general fund, which in some cases is fine if if it needs to. But more times than not, it is for something very specific, like for JDRF, it was to send a certain number of kids to this camp and make that happen for them. And that's a really tangible um, outcome to the donation process, which I think people like to hear in our group. Yeah, and I think, too, it gives members that sense of... um empowerment too when they know exactly where their dollars are going to. And I think some of the feedback that we've gotten from people like right after they become a member or they attend an event as a guest is they say, so we we're giving you this hundred dollars. It's the checks made out directly to that nonprofit and it's going to XYZ program within that nonprofit. We just heard about it. Somebody just stood up and said, this is why they need this money right now because this is what they're doing. And sometimes when you're donating to an organization just individually, you're, you know, you see something like a, you know, somebody's doing a fundraiser or whatever that may be, you go, oh, okay, and you write your check or make your online donation then you don't really know much more about it after that. I mean, you get your thank you um, and you get your, you know, your tax receipt. But uh, how often do you get the opportunity then to, you know, call them up and be like, hey, I just donated. So how's that? Where's that money going? What can you send me some pictures of how that what impact you made? Um, you don't have that. And so I that's another really unique thing, I guess, that I'm trying to say about 100 Women Who Care is we then have the nonprofit come back that following quarter and be able to tell us exactly what kind of impact that made. Um, and of course, we're really excited this next quarter in Scottsdale because Southwest um, Wildlife uh, Confer- Conservation center will be there and we're excited because they'll be might be bringing some some critters Mm -hmm. (laughs) the animals finally took it this quarter (laughs) we've been waiting five years for an animal charity to get picked and you know it's tough when you're up against cancer patient patients or ill children or homelessness there's a lot of causes out there that directly impact humans and 
I think we all have big hearts for animals, but um, it, they don't necessarily get the votes all the time. So we were thrilled when Loren's charity was picked because, you know, animals are an important part of our lives. And I've got two kitty cats and I can't imagine my life without them. So, <laughs> so Paula, tell us... Um, so how long have you been with Copper Point? You just started there recently. Three right? whole months. Three whole months. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky me. Yeah. yeah. So what are some of the, you mentioned some of the employee giving, mm-hmm. um, but what are some of the volunteer opportunities then that uh, your employees are participating in? Yeah. Uh, an example is when school started, we did uh, backpacks. Mm-hmm. So not only did we create the backpacks and the employees donated everything that went into the backpacks, but we also went to the schools and delivered the backpacks. So we try to do programmatic things if possible, like Dr. Seuss' birthday, you go in and you read mm-hmm. in the classrooms and those kind of things, food centers, we go to the and do food drives and go in and work with the needy homeless. I mean, we're across the board, I have to say, in every aspect of giving that we possibly can. And we have teams that love to do fundraisers within the organization. Oh, whether that's fun. It's a it's yeah. a blast. We have one who is coming in actually the uh, on Friday to do a bake sale. And she has worked so hard at creating all these baked goods oh, and wow. other employees are bringing in baked goods and they're selling them for a dollar each along with and raffle what time things. Is this? Yeah. Where, where is this <laughs> and located? It's, <laughs> and it's spectacular <laughs> kind of treats yeah. for everyone. Yeah. So it will be fun. So it really, we're, we allow the teams and the individuals to submit and what drives them mm-hmm. drives us. Right. Because we want them to take ownership in it. And it's kind of like 100 Women Who Care. Not only do we give to one charity every quarter, but we get to vote on which charity we give to. Oh, that's great. Yeah. You know, so that's empowering mm-hmm. in itself because it's nice to give back, but when corporations say you have to do it to this, right. you know, it, you, you may not be as motivated or it may not, you may not have the passion mm-hmm. for I don't know what it would be. Maybe animals, you right, know. Right. Uh, you have more passion for autism or for something else. So we well, try to Well, if you sure. want it to be bigger, too, than just that one-time give. Right. And you want it to be impactful. You know, really, you want it to be something that the employees or, you know, members of your giving circle or whatever that may be can see it and say, yeah, I'll give my money, but I'd like to learn more. And right. then learning more and then maybe outside of those business hours or when time comes to use some of that volunteer time, then they're, you know, then they're committed to a nonprofit that they already right. have that connection to. Because you learn so much by getting involved, like mm-hmm. kitchen on the street, you know, packing the boxes, doing the things. You really start to understand what the whole mission of mm-hmm. that organization is when you're a part of it. Right. So it, right. it is amazing. And can we've had volunteer members who have come back to us after a quarter and said, yeah, I donated to this nonprofit. And then I actually went to their website. And while I was on the website, I learned about this. And then next thing you know, they're volunteering there. <laughs> that really, yeah, yeah. That, that is the ripple effect mm-hmm. that's been so neat to see is that women will hear about a cause. So it's not just about funding of the organization, but it's also about growing awareness and education for them as well. And even if a charity isn't picked in a particular quarter to receive our donation, they've just gotten their message out to a room full of 100 women. And those women will donate a room full of furniture um, to a to a charity or clothing. I mean, I, that's one of the changes that I've made in my life is when I do donate household goods or clothing, I'm more targeted now in who I donate to because it's in the past, time management led me to drop it off at the closest, easiest place I could do it. Mm -hmm. And so now knowing that there's a 
over 55 day shelter downtown for homeless persons. And there's a lot of men down there and they need clothing. Well, when my husband cleans out his closet, that's where those donations go now, because I know that there's men down there that need that. So the ripple effect has been tremendous. It's not only money and volunteer hours, but, you know, other goods and services as well. I know we had one nonprofit who received a donation from us and we encouraged the executive director to say, what do you need when she came back to address our group? And she said, I need my new building painted. And there was at least two or three members that came up to her and said, I know somebody who can do that for you. So the connections that are being made with our members and the nonprofits has been really neat to see. Yeah. And I also, um, I don't know how many times where I've had somebody who comes to me and says, oh, you, I know you'll know, you know, which nonprofit should I have this, or I want to do this, or there's this project at work. What what should I do? And I send them to our charity page on our website (laughs) because I say, I already know ever, you know, about these charities here, go onto the website. It's kind of a quick resource, you know, place to go. Um, But again, just like you mentioned, just that exposure that they're getting. So when they do, you know, have the opportunity to somebody comes up and speaks, you know, in that five minutes that you're speaking about that organization, uh, there's just a tremendous amount of connection, you know, connection that can be made between that person, that nonprofit, um, and the members. And I think what's really um, kind of unique also is some of our members do actually work for the nonprofit. They might be on the board or they might be an executive director. Some of them have volunteered for them, but we actually have women who they just happened to hear about a nonprofit somewhere else and they were connect, felt connected to them. Um, I can't remember who it was, but I know we had some ladies that actually, before they nominated, went on a tour and got really involved. And then they said, okay, now I can come. And sure enough, they got picked out of the hat. They presented, their charity was chosen. So I think that's a really unique experience as well as you get to hear about the nonprofit from a bunch of different perspectives. You might just be hearing from somebody who cares about it a lot. Like you mentioned with Loren this last quarter, um, she nominated Southwest um, Wildlife Conservation Center. Um, Her connection to it is, you know, is very unique. And she had a really great story. Other uh, people who've gotten up have said, yes, I work for this nonprofit and this is what we're doing. And the fact that everyone in the room, regardless of what your connection is, is really just wanting to know, okay, how are we helping them? If we vote for them and give them our money, how are we helping them? Well, I think the really neat part about what we do as well is the whole concept is that we're taking somebody's $100 and we're turning it literally into $10,000 in one hour. And there's a small percentage of the population that could write a check for $10,000. And so this is really giving the opportunity to our members who have a heart for a specific charity to be able to do that for that charity. Um, And all they have to do is do a little research, fill out a form, and have the courage to stand up in front of a room of 100 women (laughs) (laughs) and and take some questions um, at the end of it. And so the emotion that is admitted when somebody receives um, the votes and the donation for the evening really is um, so sweet and so touching. And to to watch that go all the way through to when we deliver the funds to when they come back and they say their thank you, that just fills my heart. I mean, that's part of why I do this is because I like to create memorable experiences for people. And that one is definitely um, special. Mm-hmm. And going back to your point, Paula, that you mentioned before, you know, all of the donations go directly to the nonprofit. So um, I was actually just joking with somebody the other day because they um, they said, oh, they they referred to us as a nonprofit, 100 Women Who Care, as a nonprofit. And they said, oh, they said, oh, I know, I understand that you're a nonprofit. And so you blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, actually, no, we're not even a nonprofit. We're even, we have no money whatsoever because <laughs> we we're, we don't even, you know, a nonprofit at least has money coming in and uses it for administrative costs. We don't actually... All the donations go directly to the nonprofits. But 
the way we're able to do that is because we do have sponsors. So again, going back to, you know, how companies in the community are able to help and give back. That's one of those big ways that we, I feel, have been so successful and um, is just that we do have support not only from our members, but also from companies that have been kind enough to either in-kind donations or monetarily help support some of those administrative costs so we can keep doing what we're doing at the level that we're doing it at. Because, you know, one thing that, again, going back to when we first started, Kim was very adamant about was we're running this like it is a business. I know it's, you know, it's we're all volunteers. We all have other jobs per se, but we are running this like a business. And that's what I think is important for the sustainability of it and being able to make that impact that we've been able to make. Yeah, absolutely. And I think also that we have kept our mission very singular. Um, We've had people approach us about if you, if you allow me to come into your giving circle and, and set up a jewelry table or set up, you know, some other kind of goods, I'll donate a certain percentage back to the charity that's selected. And, you know, that's not the experience that we're wanting to create for our members. Our members know that our giving circle starts at 630. It's done at 730. We, I was laughing. Um, we actually had a member who she had to be somewhere at eight. And she's like, I knew I could plan something for right after my this giving <laughs> circle because you always end on time. And that's the commitment that we've made to our members is that we, this is for busy women who care and we're not going to take up a lot of extra time. We're going to come in, we're going to get the mission accomplished. And I think that's what's made us successful as well with providing a consistent, reliable experience. Yeah. And Paula, when you're talking about your experience with 100 Women Who Care, what are some of the things that you're you're talking to with uh, with other women and you're telling them about this? What are some of the things that you think are kind of like the, oh, you've got to join because? Well, because it's easy. Yeah. And not only is it easy, but you meet like-minded women. And I think that we all enjoy the opportunity to spread our wings and meet new people. And when you all have that same kind of focus of wanting to network, but in a different way, uh, because we do so much, if you're in the professional realm, you do so much business networking, but this is different than business networking. This is how can we really reach out and what can we do for each other? Uh, It's just... I never, ever leave there without crying because <laughs> it's, you know, that you've done something. You know that it's, it's more than making a difference. You're changing lives in such a unique way. It's, it, I love it. It's just, it's because I've been on other boards and they're wonderful and they've made a difference as well. But this is simply easy and enjoyable on so many levels. Yeah, that's that's nice to hear because I I think by all of those things we've seen them they that that's what's happening in the room, but it's all been so organic. We've never once said, okay, let's make sure that people feel this, you know, one way or let's, you know, oh, we want there to be networking, but we don't want it to be like the other networking. It just all just organically happened in that way. I mean, granted in the beginning, we when did we add in the hour, the social hour ahead of time? Did we add that in Probably pretty soon in. after? Or yeah, yeah, within the first year. Right, right. But I think a lot of the reason we did, though, is because pe- women were getting there earlier and earlier. The, you know, meeting started at 6.30 and they're, you know, they're there at 6 or 5.45. And we saw them kind of mingling and, and we're like, you know, they're going to be here anyway. Let's not, let's just call it the social hour. <laughs> well, and, and people are welcoming. Yes. Because there's nothing worse than being the lone person Mm -hmm. just walking in. I'm new. How am I going to feel? In fact, my daughter just joined an organization of women and they're not as welcoming. And when she tells me that, I'm like, oh, that breaks my heart, you know, (laughs) because she's taking the risk to stretch herself Mm -hmm. and get out there. And they're not 100 women who care. (laughs) (laughs) We can find her a chapter. Absolutely. (laughs) No, I do. I know. I like that as well. And there's been times where I have asked people now for five years, I'm like, I'm going to keep asking you until you flat out just tell me to stop asking or you show up. (laughs) And there were times where it took a couple of years and then they finally showed up and then they said, oh, 
now I get it. Now, you know, now that they've been there, but it can be intimidating if you don't really know what to expect. You're like, oh, if you've been to a fundraising gala in the past, it's not that. <laughs> if you've been someplace and there's a silent auction, it's not that. If you've been to the breakfast where they tell the story, everyone cries, and then they whip out the envelopes, it's not that. It's <laughs> I always try to tell people it's not that at all. That's why we always encourage guests to come because I think some people right off the bat, I mean, Anytime we get a membership form on the website and we're like, they've never even been to one yet and they already are committing to be a member. That's great. But always encourage people to come and check it out and and meet people, other people there. Because like you said, I don't know how many times I've seen some women chatting and I'm like, oh, how long, how long have you guys known each other? Oh, we don't. She just walked in and I saw that she was new. So we just started started chatting. <laughs> Which is perfect. And the other is that for some people... $100 is a stretch. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to be able to join with friends. That's right. We do allow teams. So we allow teams of two, three, or four if uh, women want to share the contribution, the quarterly contribution amongst themselves. So thank you for bringing that yeah. up. Because well, every dollar counts. Every dollar counts. Yeah. And we understand that we want to be inclusive of everybody's um, giving budget and we understand that people have other causes that they like to give to as well. And so this is an opportunity to um, still be involved and still make an impact and still be able to nominate a charity as well. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit then about, so we're almost to the 500,000 mark, but we're not quite there. So what, what, what can we do? Gosh, what can we do? I just realized, though, I'm like, we need a tissue sponsor after you made the comment about not leaving without. I'm like, hmm, who can we get as a tissue sponsor? No. Oh, I know. You're right. So we are, best calculations, uh, going to be within $30,000 of our goal by after the end of these fourth quarter giving circles. And so we are starting a 30K campaign where we are reaching out to our current members and getting creative in ways that they may be able to help us get there. And so one of the things that you brought up, Paula, that we do make a point of asking, but I really want to keep it in front of people is the employer matching. So if people have submitted those dollars and they haven't reported that back to us, that's all part of our totals as well. Um, some other ideas that Jacqueline and I have come up with are it's the holidays. And if you make donations to charities around the holidays, go visit our website and pick one of our charities and make that donation to one of our charities that we support. Or perhaps do, instead of a gift exchange, create your own mini giving circle at a holiday party that you're doing. But the other thing that is exciting and I'm very happy to announce is that Copper Point is helping us kick off our 30K campaign with a $2,500 donation to a charity. So thank you, Paula, so much for making that happen. And we're hoping that other organizations, corporations or foundations will be moved to do that as well to help us get across the finish line and achieve that goal. It's our pleasure. And sometimes we forget that we could ask our corporations and our companies that we work for. We don't have to do it out of our own pockets. It's kind of right. a give or get. So as members of the organization, let's let's ask, let's just ask. I mean, if you don't ask, you know what you get. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And we will be creating um, a handout for our giving circles that talk about our 30K campaign and how people can help for that. So and we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I know because now after Paula, that 30,000, we're down to 27.5, right? I know. <laughs> there you go. See? Dollar by dollar. Yep, see? <laughs> Our fellow lines are lighting up. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, th and I think that's one of those, uh, again, Going back to, like I was saying, I use our charity page as a reference point all the time because there are, gosh, how many charities do you think we have nominated on there now? Mm, I bet there's at least 35 to 40 charities that are um, been nominated, vetted, and approved right. to be in our hat. Yeah. So for, so um, 
that process, what that process looks like is, so once you become a member, um, you're able to nominate a charity. And what that looks like is when you nominate that charity, you fill out a uh, charity application. And we actually look that over. Um, and Kim uh, does a lot of background work and, and looking through that just to be sure that, you know, it is a 501c3. Um, we do look at their financials to, you know, make sure that everything's on the up and up. Um, but People know then that once those charities are listed on our website and nominated, they can be confident that even if they are looking for another an organization to give to outside of if they're a member, um, outside of their normal contributions, or say, you know, the company comes around and sells everybody, okay, everybody, we want you to vote for who we're going to give to for the holidays – you can definitely check out that list of charities on our website. It links to each of their websites as well. So you can even do your own sleuthing <laughs> to find out what their mission is. And bringing it back to Paula's point from before, how important that is for businesses to be um, when they're looking for those partnerships in the community, looking for organizations that do um, align with their same values, because then it really just ties back in so much easier. Um, so yeah, just definitely encouraging people to take a look at those charities um, and then reach out to us and let us know, you know, hey, guess what? Our company chose uh, one of the charities that was on the list, and we were able to uh, do a two thousand dollar donation or five hundred dollar donation, whatever that looks like. I'll take ten grand. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's go big. Let's go big. <laughs> so that you know, that was one of the one of the reasons why um, I really wanted to make sure that I highlighted a um, hundred women who care again before the end of the year because it is just such a I mean, that 500,000 and we're just we're right there. And it's just so exciting that, again, looking back, that's, that's gone to all local charities here in um, in the Phoenix area in Maricopa County. And while there are other actually chapters around Arizona, we've got chapters in, there's a chapter in Tucson and Prescott and Flagstaff. And um, there's now a men's chapter in Prescott. That's so exciting. And we have the leadership team from the new chapter in Eloy coming to our Awatuki Giving Circle awesome. this quarter yeah. to observe. Yeah, they They've taken a little different approach where, we just kind of jumped in and grew our membership. They've been growing their membership for this past year, and they will have their first giving circle in February, I believe. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. But they're coming. Um, they're coming to Awatuki and gonna they're gonna see all the fun that happens. See all yes. the fun. <laughs> yes, yeah. So that's so exciting, and um, you know, going with kind of my theme over you know the past year and a half or so that I've done the show is that there you know get creative you can definitely get creative with the ways that you give back in the community and looking at ways that you don't it shouldn't feel like a burden <laughs> to give back you shouldn't feel you know like guilted into having to give back and it can definitely be something that fits within your time one one hour once a quarter or it can fit in with you don't have money to give back okay volunteer your time. Um, or it could be something, uh, you know, going to your company and saying, hey, you know, I noticed we're not doing anything for the holidays. You know, can we maybe get together a team of employees to put together a bake sale, mm -hmm. whatever that might look like. So just creative ways. And so, we, you know, Kim and I, we were actually brainstorming ways on the way out to when we went to visit um, Southwest Wildlife, different different fun ways that people can um, help us meet this 500000 dollar goal. And I think I think um, we're definitely going to get there. And I can't wait to see some of the creative ways that people help us out with that. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, as we wrap up today's show, I just wanted to give um, each of you an opportunity. Um, Paula, if people want to learn more about Copper Point, um, obviously, if they want to do business with Copper Point, um, we didn't really even get into that too much. But um, if people want to do business with Copper Point, we have businesses out there needing some insurance, what do they need to do? Or if they're actually just wanting to um, learn more about the ways that you're giving back in the community, how can they find the information? Well, if they want to see us overall, they can go to copperpoint.com. And if they want to connect with me, I would love it. And I'm at P. Bomberito kind of like burrito, bomberito, <laughs> B-O-M-M-A-R-I-T-O at copperpoint.com. And for anything, whatever needs that they may have, it's always nice to brainstorm, you know, whether you're a nonprofit 
and you'd like to know if they're in our giving areas or whether you're another corporation and you're looking at how you'd like to strategize. And I'd be more than happy to play with them. Awesome. And Kim, what information does do people need to know about our upcoming giving circles? Sure. So our first one is next week in Scottsdale on October 30th. And then the following week, we're in Ahwatukee on November 5th and the East Valley on November 7th. And they can go to our website, which is 100, the 100, org, And you can find information on our giving circles, our charities, our processes. You can register as a guest for a giving circle, or you can just show up too. We're not really attached to how you get there. Um, we just <laughs> would love to see you there. And we would love to have your help in making it across the finish line this year. And something unique about our fourth quarter giving circles, too, is we're, we're allowing boys in the room this time. So we are inviting... What? E- I- <laughs> Paula's like, wait, no. <laughs> we are allowing men um, this uh, quarter as well because we know that... Um, well, secretly, because we want 100 Men Who Care in Phoenix to pop up. But, I know. Uh, <laughs> but, it's our hidden agenda yes, there. Yes, yes. But, you know, we really just want them to kind of see what their friends, partners, spouses have been doing over the last year. We want them to kind of share in that experience and really see. Maybe they just think that their, you know, wife is going away for a girl's night each quarter for $100. And, you know, they doesn't, you know, he really wants to see proof that that what's happening. But we are inviting um, members, guests, everybody out to our fourth quarter giving circles um, this time around because we just really want to make this a huge celebration of community and um, show everybody how we do what we do and how we're able to make that $500,000 mark. Yes. All right. And we can also be found on um, social media as well. So on Facebook, um, just look up uh, 100 uh, Women Who Care Valley of the Sun, and you can see our Facebook events on there as well. And you'll have more information about our upcoming giving circles. All right. Well, thank you so much, ladies, for being here today. So excited to see where this goes. Thank you so much, Paula, for sharing about Copper Point and and what you're doing in the community. So excited for your new position over there. That sounds thank amazing. You. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes, definitely. So you've been listening to 3C Amplified, where we share how others are connecting, creating, and collaborating to amplify their impact. And we hope we've inspired you to do the same in your community. If you are a fellow change maker and want to build connections, create relationships, and collaborate with others to make positive change, join our new online community built to support and engage people like you wanting to amplify their impact in communities around the world. Visit 3CAmplified.com slash community to learn more. Until next time, I'm Jacqueline DeStremps with another Hand Advantage. Let me help create a digital marketing strategy to put your organization's mission in front of your target audience and highlight the impact you're having in your community. Mm